Namaskar everyone. Uh, we are back uh, with one of our community members, uh, Dr. Rajesh Pawar, who is um, not just a professor, but also a practicing doctor. He is here with us today to share his journey and uh, some of the uh, social aspects of uh, his work and also the uh, city uh, that he is working in and also his background. So I would like to uh, introduce Dr. Rajesh Pawar uh, from uh, Mazari. Thank you, Puneet. Pleasure to be Hi. here with you. Yes. So, Doctor, as uh, we have had uh, multiple webinars, today we are going to um, have a, a more of a conversation with you about uh, professional excellence and the uh, social commitment that uh, is there and what you are working on. Sounds good? Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Let it be more of a heart-to-heart -heart talk. And um, it would be a, the conversation would be more, as you put it, let it stay a conversation. And, got it, uh, got it, got it. Really, yeah. So, um, uh, as we know, uh, Dr. Pawar uh, is the son of uh, Shankar Papu Pawar and uh, Sunanda Pawar from uh, Mangat Majari. So, can you just give us a brief idea of uh, your connection to Majari? Uh, well, I'm as you already introduced me, the best way of introducing me, uh, the son of Shankar and Sunanda would be the best way of introducing me, and you have aptly done so. Connection murder of Angadat murder childhood just Angadat Zalla Magine. Most of the time, I was uh, we were in North Karnataka, Belgaum, Hopri, the Harvard area, where my basic education was. Uh, holidays I used to spend in Karwar in both Vanguard and Chandia. Uh, more so, more um, there spending holidays, say once or twice a year. We used to go there, spend days together there. And that's the connection with um, Karwar. Basically, the roots are always in Karwar. Schooling, you to Schooling partly in Belgaum, partly Hubli, partly Dharwad, and again back in Belgaum. Okay, so Malar, uh, close to native place and yeah. not too far. Yeah, yeah, very, very in and around the North Karnataka part, the schooling part. Correct. And uh, as I know, you are uh, not just um, a rank holder, but also a topper in the, um, how, uh, in Karnataka, it was SSLC, correct? SSLC, yeah. So That's the secondary uh, schooling. Uh, yeah. So how, how was that experience? A uh, lot of expectations from everyone huh? when you are a topper. Uh, yeah, sort of. Uh, the thing is, uh, I wasn't that typical uh, uh, studious Mantatni Tashi. I was not okay. that sort of a student. But then, yeah, I used to spend a considerable amount of time uh, reading not only my textbooks, but other things. I mean, I've always been interested in reading. Uh, it used to be uh, more uh, because I used to attend to the classes and listen to my teachers with full concentration. So whatever uh, I used to gather during the classes used to be the most of it. And then partly come back and revise a little bit at home. So the expectations there, of course, they started building up as I started um, going from one class to the other. Mm. Uh, thankfully, my sisters were there who were continuously encouraging me to do better every year after year. So that's how it happened <laughs> and uh, still a voracious reader uh now i am a reader but not of uh, general literature but uh, more specific to my subject of plastic surgery okay so more of uh, peer reviewed journals and white that's papers. true yeah peer reviewing journals reviewing articles for publications um, i review for various journals uh, within india and outside also so before they are published, I have to read those articles and then give my comments. So it's ah. more of a reviewing. Okay. Uh, uh, you are already a professor at uh, Jawaharlal Nehru Medical College. And right. also you are uh, heading a department with KLE's uh, Belgaum uh, Institution. So you have to KLE Badal Bhi Sangha and JN Medical College. Yes. I MBBS at JN Medical College. And uh, the connection with KLE, my connection started with KLE because I joined JN Medical College. Though I had got a seat in the government medical college because uh, my father was already uh, 
working in belgaum and the family had settled in belgaum and i was being the only son my mother want, did not want to send me away to even as far as hubli so i had to stay here i had to take a transfer to jain medical college and um, started my mbbs education there and the best part was the undergraduate teaching in jain medical college was extremely um i mean uh, i can say the best that you can see uh, in the country so uh, though that's i can say that because i have been to different parts of the country after that and seen teaching in punjab mumbai uh, maharashtra other parts even abroad but the teaching uh, what we had in jain medical college was the best so chose to come back here and then the kl institute the kl society uh one thing we should admire is the way it has surged forward especially because of the present chairman uh, dr prabhakar kore um, they have uh, he is very far sighted and uh, visionary and that's how it has developed to, to now they are almost having around 300 institutes throughout india as well as abroad they have uh, a new institute here in navi mumbai also yeah true uh, a lot of good work done by them that's right in the field of education and healthcare right. oh. and uh, to me you are still in uh, contact with any of your old professors ah, i still am of course i am still in contact with most of my teachers who are alive now um, to name a few uh, my uh, teacher in miraj who is part of my ms uh, teaching uh, dr er bitri and my plastic surgery teacher dr uh, prabha yadav who is to head the department of uh, plastic surgery in tata hospital um and um, other teachers so many teachers i still am in touch with them even my school teachers i am in touch with uh tatmi he mak sanga is there a difference between a teacher and a guru ah there is definitely there is a lot of difference uh what we see or we what we have seen early in the recent past most of them are uh, they are doing the catering to the profession of teaching with the sole aim of imparting knowledge uh whether they are inspiring the students to learn or no is a different thing uh a guru is somebody who inspires the students to learn giving lectures teaching uh, principles or basics is what is done by teachers but a person who inspires you to learn directs you to learn now the role of teacher has changed over a period of time earlier the teacher was the only source of knowledge okay. now you go on the net you will find umpteen uh, things available and you can pick up any information from any corner of the world correct so access teacher, has become very easy very easy so the teacher is now more of a facilitator Hmm. is a guiding force so whether by choice or by compulsion a teacher has to convert from the conventional teacher's role to a person who is a facilitator that's so that's what has happened and um, my gurus have been people who have inspired me in their own way and believe me each and every person has something or the other to teach you be it your teacher your brother sister your children your parents they teach you something or the other in life so everybody is a teacher in their own uh, capacity correct but who was the one that uh, made it so for you in your mind yes i should uh, uh, pursue medicine ah uh, well my, <laughs> me pursuing medicine was not my teacher it was my mother uh -huh. i mean uh, she uh, in india we start choosing our profession very early i think 17 18 we decide what we want to be and during our times the access to open world or outside world was not much so uh, it was too early to decide on what you like and what you don't like and we had to rely solely on the peer pressure or people around you and that's where i feel the parents are the best people to judge what you would be apt to do and Uh, though my inclination was never towards medicine i always wanted to take up mathematics my craze was for numbers uh, my mother said no you have to take up medicine you are made for medicine and that's how i chose medicine and i feel she chose it, 
chose it very aptly for me and i have no regrets and we would all like to thank her because we have such a good uh, doctor with us uh, in our yeah community. but then here i would like to mention another person um, you must have heard of dr koyar rani or who yes. was called uh, ramesh rani when i was on the verge of deciding on engineering or medicine he was teaching chemistry in one of the engineering colleges okay so i don't know whether my mother had a private discussion with him when i went to him he it straight away told me forget engineering you join medicine i don't know what made him say that and uh, i have a tremendous respect for him for his academic abilities and i took it as a gospel thing for me and then joined medicine <laughs> good so uh, generally we have seen um, in our community and more 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 or less all of india ki children either engineering or medicine Uh, yeah. how do you feel what are your thoughts no. for your this, uh... if you had asked me this question a couple of years back i would have said is yes. but mm-hmm. nowadays children have started uh, thinking of more um, other avenues also and the option now is a lot of options are there the possibilities have expanded great deal children can choose from so many different uh, professions i have seen people picking up music and excelling in that Pick, um, children picking up literature and excelling in that so it's the choice is there only thing is children have to get out of this um uh, this mindset that medicine or engineering. engineering no there is much more to life than uh, only these two professions i am sure that at kids only at last uh, 10 10 15 years uh, engineering focus jast jala medicine khup kami students pursue karta इंजीनियरिंग Uh, and whereas the engineering colleagues they have already at the age of 21 22 they have graduated and they have started earning so that uh, makes them feel that it is not worth all that deal and uh, it's not just mbbs you have to specialize you have to super specialize mm-hmm. it's a long long race mm-hmm. so only the uh, people who have the grit for it will and the support will support you. support more than support the the intention to pick up that as a passion will go in for that and it, was, uh, and it is not manla uh, medicine is not a uh, hey ki 9 to 5 to me na na not it you cannot leave you are so, always on the job uh, thode asa branches where you can treat them as 9 to 5 job or you can define your working hours but most of the medical profession or a true doctor has to be always available hmm. so there is nothing like rest <laughs> and it and it could uh, important point as i wanted to uh, ask you this now you did your uh, you started your medicine um, journey with jn medical college right nantar to me uh, you not just passed out but you passed out as the topper mm. of uh, that year then uh, you came back to your uh, alma mater jn college yeah. as yeah. a professor uh, as a professor and then you also uh, started a new uh, uh, you started a new department and are heading that department that's so true how, how is the uh, yeah, journey two three two three reasons for this one is um, when i did my mbbs and then went out to do my post graduation i went to different other colleges and then i realized that there's something in my college at the undergraduate level which is not there anywhere else mm. that was the first reason that i thought that i have to come back to this college and do something here and try um, pursuing my career here that was the first reason second mm-hmm. reason i wanted to be as close to north karnataka karwar belgaum as possible and uh, the best available opportunity was in belgaum so decided to come back to belgaum third reason is as i was training uh, during my mbbs during my post graduation during my super specialization i was getting so much of information so much of knowledge from my teachers 
and uh, that valuable knowledge came from the experience mm -hmm. and all that i collected from them i thought they have put in so many years of efforts and they have given it to me on a platter and whatever they have given it to me on a platter if i don't pass this on to somebody else mm -hmm. along with whatever experience i gain then this would end there so i thought that i should be a source that i pass on this knowledge which i have gathered and let it not end with me correct doing practice earning money everything ends with you treating patients also to an extent you treat the patient you finish treating the patient it ends with you but if you are able to spread knowledge or pass on knowledge or whatever mm. experience you have gained to others then things stay on for years and years to come so that was my intention of coming back into the teaching profession and i joined a medical college though i had so many avenues to go abroad settle in bigger cities metros in fact i had already got a fellowship in uh, uk where i could have gone and started practicing there but then i thought no i mean that's not what i am made for and this is what i would be happy doing so i came back to belgaum a small city in fact even my father questioned me what are you going to do in belgaum what is the scope for a plastic surgeon in belgaum and belgaum i remember i had such a tough time explaining to people what plastic surgery is general idea people plastic surgery means cosmetic surgery Correct. Or plastic surgery means skin grafting. They mm -hmm. don't know anything beyond this. And I said there is a scope. And when I joined here, I believe me, the initial one or two months, I had to literally stand at the reception counter to receive my patients. Now there Correct. is a time where people have to wait for an appointment. So uh, this is the journey in from one person. managing a department now we have a department of plastic surgery with eight qualified plastic surgeons working in the department so that's the progress that we have made in the last 20 years or so um for a city like belgaum it is something which should be we should be proud of so that, that is a, that is wonderful sir head tingal ja topic asni um cosmetic surgery A lot of people may not know the fun functional aspect of it or the corrective aspect of it. You right. can just uh, elaborate on that. All of us are getting the idea. It, general, to me, Sangila Pramana, people mean cosmetic surgery, mean that plastic surgery, means all of that. But no, that's not true. Plastic uh, cosmetic surgery is maybe around five or ten percent of what plastic surgery. Plastic surgery is such a broad, vast subject. It is mainly. not restricted to any particular organ at the urology matla kidney related cardiology matla heart related uh, nephrology matla also kidney related pulmonology matla lung related however plastic surgery is not related to any organ mm. nor is it related to any age group like pediatrics matla children geriatrics matla old age gynecology matla women ashikais na there is no restriction so mm. we treat patients from anywhere from the hair to the toe you have heard of hair transplant you have heard of in growing toenail we can treat anything from the hair to toe uh, basically it is governed by principles how yeah. we handle tissues how we think of the surgeries how we plan the surgeries how we think of the consequences each individualization of treatment what i would like to treat person a would not be the same as person b hmm person a would be a manual labor a person b could be a, a musician so hmm. my treatment plan changes from a to b okay person a may be aged 15 years person b may be aged 60 years so again the treatment plan changes unlike other specialties so this is what it is based on principles a plastic surgeon can treat defects and deformities Correct. any deformity which could be because right from the time of birth which we call birth deformities or congenital deformities could be acquired because of accidents hmm. road traffic accidents fractures bones face fractures injuries to the face burns burns uh, burns or could be because of surgeries performed for cancer hmm. cancer at the, they might have to remove some part of the cheek or part of the breast 
so many other things which are important, but they have to remove because they are afflicted with cancer. So those can be reconstructed with plastic surgery. In addition to that, hand injuries also are a part of plastic surgery. Maxillofacial injuries are a part of plastic surgery. Then comes cosmetic surgery. And then replantation and minute surgeries like joining small vessels, a cut finger being put back has to be small vessels, lahlan vessels, which are less than a millimeter. They have to be joined so that the patency within the vessels have to be maintained. So you will have to suture it with such fine stitches. We do it under magnification of around 10 times, 15 times, and then do the surgeries. So all that is a part of plastic surgery. So much more. To me, Sanglad, there are uh, eight uh, qualified doctors with you. Uh, you have won various uh, gold medals and university ranks right from MBPS. There are any other gold, uh, gold medalist with you? Mm. No, not really. Uh, right now, they are in, uh, in my department. But there are, I do have colleagues who have excelled much more than what I have. There have been, um, in other specialties, there are people who have done very well. Ani, to me, um, you had also done your MS in surgery from uh, Government Medical College, Miraj. How was Miraj. that in brief? Uh, well, before I took up MS uh, general surgery, I was doing my anesthesia in PGI Chandigarh. So, the Amgel timer when I was giving my entrance exams, the Babri Masjidach problems are and that's hmm. when uh, the entrance exam delays are. Hmm. Mak, I got a seat of uh, anesthesia in PGI Chandigarh. So, I joined hmm. I was pursuing that uh, course. And PGI is a very big institute uh, of national repute. So, hmm. All India when surgery made. I was in two minds whether to leave that uh, such a big institute and join general surgery. I came to Miraj to see the college. After seeing the college, I said, "This is hardly anything in front of PGI." So I made up a mind, my mind to not join uh, Miraj and go back and become an anesthetist. Somewhere halfway, uh, en route from Belgaum to Pune, I decided, "No, I have to." follow my heart, my passion. He, I always wanted to be a surgeon and there were teachers who had inspired me uh, with their skills and I wanted to take up surgery. So I said, no, I shouldn't repent any time later in life for not having done surgery. So got down at Pune, Michael Bhavoji Aste Satish Gaukarman, Taksangalana, I will go back to Miraj. So he accompanied me to Miraj. We took admission. I took admission in Miraj for general surgery and then next rest is history. So interesting, that's interesting detours in life. Yeah, very much. There have been a lot of such turns, U-turns and uh, deviations from what I would think I would be going, which way I would be going. As uh, I'm engineering mathematics to sudden turn to medicine and in medicine doing anesthesia then turning towards uh, surgery. And okay. I mean, surgery was always uh, my passion. And even in surgery, um, surgeries are not. I was for some time I was contemplating on doing uh, cardiothoracic surgery. I was getting the seats for cardiothoracic surgery in KEM and Prime Institute, but again, I chose no, I'll mm. go in for plastic surgery Correct. because it's so, uh, a more creative branch, mm. creative and uh, uh, very artistic uh, branch where mm. uh, uh, where uh, you can. Uh, Put up your creative ability, your artistic talent also um, can be used. And there is a lot of scope for learning and uh, doing different things different ways. That's why I chose a plastic surgeon. Correct. And to me, uh, you have written a lot of uh, papers uh, peer -reviewed, uh, in peer reviewed journals. And to me, to me, a uh, point, Ashilo, uh, you mentioned you have an interest in mathematics. How you are using the geometry and mathematics in your uh, cosmetic surgeries and plastic surgeries. See, see how the passion drives you. I mean, Correct. what I was interested in mathematics and geometry, even when yeah. coming after coming to plastic surgery, uh, there are certain surgeries which we perform. And uh, when we are performing surgeries, we plan certain uh, way in which we are going to take the incision, cut the tissues, suture the tissues. There, I realized that I can bring up my uh, mathematics, inclination towards mathematics. 
And that's where uh, I have devised certain surgeries wherein the geometry is the basis. Very sound geometric uh, principles are the basis of my uh, surgical techniques. And they have been published in uh, uh, quite a few international journals. There are two or three uh, papers only on this technique, which have been uh, published in international journals. And even some international uh, textbooks have quoted me with that, that technique is now named after me. So uh, my Great. passion for mathematics has uh, been reflected even now. Great. So Mandlar, uh, as a advice to youngsters, Ektar detour zata. It is not a setback. You have exactly. to strive, uh, strive forward. And uh, some, somehow the interest will be utilized in your profession. Exactly. exactly. Uh, be prepared for detours, be prepared for surprises, but uh, eventually you will go the way where your heart wanted to go or you will find your heart in the way you have chosen. So it's either you follow your passion or you find your passion. So it's uh, either ways you can do it and uh, when you find passion in what you are doing, then that's the success. If you are enjoying what you are doing, then that's success. Very true. Sir, uh, a question, Mandlar. How, how, how is Karwar in your life? Did the development changes uh, you would want to see in uh, Karwar specific to the uh, field? Karwar, Karwar always, our roots are in Karwar, my roots are in Karwar, my roots are in Wangad, Anmatta. So we, uh, where you have come up from, obviously that's where uh, we are always linked to. And I personally believe the deeper your roots, the taller you grow. So uh, you have to always respect your roots wherever you are from uh, with all modesty. In fact, I mean, it has to be with modesty. It should not be that I have reached some level and where I come from is something uh, not up to that level. That's not true. Wherever you come from is what defines you. Mm. So Karwar has always been uh, in my heart. Uh, my childhood has been spent there uh, during my vacations, whenever I used to go. And those were the, some of the best days in my life. I still remember in Chandi, in Angar. I remember mm. those, some of, those were some of the best days. Uh, while doing medicine uh, preparation and uh, the studies part, ever felt that uh, uh, it is not my cup of tea? Can I this lay? Uh, honest answers as well. No, I never thought okay. that. That never came uh, to my mind. Uh, um, sometimes, I mean, once or twice, uh, when I was working in Mumbai, uh, St. George's mm -hmm. Hospital, Residency Kartashilo. And then Magal Salo, he was just around uh, one and a half, two years, and he was in Ghat Kopar. Uh -huh. And uh, I used to be on call every day in St. George's. And uh, in St. George's Hospital, I used to spend uh, literally, there used to be never a time when I could uh, go to see my son, though he used to stay around 10 to 12 kilometers from where I was. Um, and I used to be having so many patients waiting for me. And I had to request somebody to just sign the calls and keep them. And I used mm. to go to meet him somewhere late in the evening. And uh, then he used to be waiting to meet me. And when I used to go and when I had to come back again at night to uh, the hospital, um, he asked me, why you do you have to go to the hospital? And uh, mm. he was told by my mother-in-law that, Na, tu, papa, doctor asni, hospital arata. She had told me this. So I told mm. him, uh, I am a doctor, so I have to go to the hospital. And he immediately said, you are not a doctor, you are a papa. <laughs> that was when it hurt me so badly. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, but then uh, he has been a nice kid. So after that, there has been no problem. So those are few times when you do feel that you are exhausting yourself, but it is all worth it. Yes, doctor's life is always sacrifice and uh, social <laughs> commitments. <laughs> those are the but, um, uh, point as you know, you, uh, your um, MPS completed at the cusp of uh, the new India that we see today. 90s, 91, post liberalization. Uh, what did you see as in when you were learning? And uh, once you finished learning, how, how is the transition or the change that you saw? 
uh, there has been a lot of change, a lot of change, not only because of the doctors, but because of the mm -hmm. people around the doctors, also the community at large. Uh, initially, not in the 90s, before 90s, I can say, whatever the doctor used to be saying or advising used to be the gospel truth. Uh, eventually, uh, people started educating themselves, they started getting knowledge, they started finding out for themselves whether the doctor is advising right or wrong. And the, gradually that uh, element of doubt, that element of suspicion creeped in, which was not a good uh, thing for the profession as well as for the general public. Sadly, now what has happened is the general public views a doctor with a great of amount of suspicion. Is he capable is first thing they think. Is he uh, thinking the right way or no? They doubt his uh, credentials. They doubt his um, uh, uh, approach to you. Everything is doubted. So partly doctors also are responsible. More, many doctors have started thinking in terms of finances, the economic returns and all that, which is also dangerous. What has happened of late, now it's medical practice has come to marketing. You have to market yourself and then you do well, which is also another dangerous thing. Marketing is not what is required when you are treating human beings, live human beings. It's okay when you are selling some product, you are uh, doing something else, marketing is fine. But when mm -hmm. it is treating human lives, then uh, I don't think marketing should be uh, the thing that should be the uh, prime focus. Um, what I feel is that uh, gradual change from the people revering a doctor as a god has now changed drastically. I mm. don't say doctor is not a god. Doctor is not a god. Doctor is also a human being, but doctor is not a demon either. So I don't think any doctor ever thinks bad for a patient. Or patient doctor which are karukat shakna it is his own existence which it is at stake. So don't always suspect the uh, uh, credibility of the doctor or the hmm. intention of the doctor. Ani, to me, to me, dual role sa. Ek tar you are not just a practicing successful doctor with the uh, as a head of a department but to me you're still teaching so uh, how do you balance first of all how do you find the time and then how do you balance uh, both uh, well uh, i'm fortunately uh, my training i mean uh, what i am involved in the teaching is more a skill oriented training or a psychomotor uh, training which is there hmm. my students are somebody who has um, the people who have already finished their post graduation so the, they are post uh, doctor i mean this is a post doctoral course so they have to learn from my psychomotor skills how i practice how i operate how i plan and that forms a part of my patient care hmm. so it is more of an apprenticeship that uh, through which the students are learning Correct. and fortunately that gels well with my uh, um, profession also the way I'm treating my patients and the students have to also know how I approach my patient. All those things, the psychomotor and the effective skills are all learned by the students. I don't have to literally spend time uh, with the blackboard and teach them. Though I do that very often and I love to do it, but uh, that is not what is uh, expected of me uh, 24 hours a day. But recently I've got into another responsibility of administration <laughs> which is taking a toll on my both patient care as well as teaching. I'm mm -hmm. trying my best to balance it. So far, I've been successful. Let's hope, keep fingers crossed. I should continue that. <laughs> best of luck for that. But to me, um, teacher first, team, uh, doctor first. Uh, very difficult question. You have put me into my uh, answer. <laughs> uh, uh, doctor first. Uh, I would always put it as because uh, uh, there I am treating with somebody's life. Um, okay. I am dealing with somebody's life and somebody's existence. Because uh, both are noble professions. They are. They are noble professions. But my as a primary thing, I, uh, primarily I am a doctor treating um, patients. Uh, fortunately, parallelly, I am also a teacher. Uh, they are not mutually exclusive and I am thankful for that. So the Is job, there a 
there will be a lot of learnings from hands-on experience or from the newer generation apprentices that you're uh, right. taking care of. And then your uh, surgery might help uh, your uh, teaching also. side. Yes. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. They're so, running parallel. Sir, ek, uh, let's get, go back to the old question there here, Shidni. When you're saying parents are the good judge, so um, any key indicators for aptitude and is aptitude only the uh, key factor or there should also be some determination from the student? Uh, there has to be some amount of determination. Uh, I would like to tell you why my I ask keep asking my mother why she always insisted on me uh, taking up the medical profession. I, it's a like she had literally emotionally blackmailed me into <laughs> taking up medicine. Then uh, when you are a child, when you are in your uh, KG and first standard, uh, mm -hmm. we used to be in the school. I mean, she used to go to pick me up from the school. And the school to as soon as the bell used to ring, all the children used to come running to the gate. Mm. And she says, I was the only person who used to come last because there was one more boy who was polio stricken and I used to hold him and get him to the gate. That's mm. what she says. Uh, and I used to do this every day. And then leave him and then come with my mother. She said, you have this uh, aptitude with this and this is going to suit for a doctor only. So you have to take up medicine. Uh, then, right. then she did not stress on in that that much. Then later on, when I started enjoying my profession, I again keep, kept asking her, do you really feel that? And then she said, yeah, I know what has happened. And that's why parents are, I think so they are good, good judge, good judges, but not now. Now what is happening is children also are exposed to so many things. They know what they want. They don't want. Correct. So uh, they are also able to make their own decisions. And there is always this thin line na, between uh, what the child is good at and what you want the child to do. Uh, yeah. to be. Uh, it's not a thin line. I think I would call it a broad line. I mean, uh, what you want the child to be is uh, not what should be dictating uh, what the child does. What the child is good at, if you're thinking as is the same as what the child you want the child to be, then it's fine. Otherwise, let the child decide for themselves what they want to do. Right. At least so, I left that to my son. <laughs> so, uh, uh, one interest, uh, one point, uh, how difficult is it now to get into MBPS? Uh, it is not very difficult of late because number of seats has increased. If you are mm -hmm. slightly above average, then getting medicine is not very difficult, I feel. Um, mm -hmm. And then there are people going in for different streams now. Engineering is Many people go for engineering. So out of 10, if you consider almost eight of them are to engineering and two are coming to medicine or even lesser. So getting into medicine is not as difficult as uh, we think it is. Slightly above every, every student can do it. Any uh, pointers for uh, preparation uh, for students? Before I say come to that, I, I would like to tell uh, the youngsters that mm -hmm. medicine is not the only option. There are so many other uh, things related to medicine. If, if your aptitude is towards patient care or health care, then there are mm -hmm. so many courses available which are having much more demand than a medical doctor. For okay. example, there is something called as speech and language pathology. They can take up that. There's something known as cognitive sciences which also mm. has applications in your engineering also. Mm. Uh, then you have uh, physiotherapy, physical uh, rehabilitation, um, umpteen number of things are there, cardiac technology, um, radio, radiography technology, so many mm. things are available. So let children not restrict themselves only to medical or being doctors, core doctors. There's so many other options which are equally good. If they don't get a seat in medicine for as a doctor, then there are other options too, which they can pick on. So a prime um, character value, I would say, is compassion. Yes. That is compassion. the that is, And then what two other points you would say are... Uh, as you said, compassion is very important. Feeling for others or trying to get into somebody else's shoes and understanding is one of the most important things. Second is hard work. Third is dedication. Mm -hmm. These three things are required. Fourth, of so, course, you already mentioned 
sacrifice yeah. you have to keep yourself uh, your uh, priorities at the back burner so um as you said there is a growth in uh, infrastructure number of colleges so government college or private uh, uh well uh, uh, if you ask me frankly mm -hmm. uh, if you are looking at the quality of students who enter these colleges the mm -hmm. quality of students who enter government colleges is always better because they have got through merit they uh, have to pay lesser fees easier okay. things they are higher on the merit they are better uh private colleges uh, it would be very wrong on me to generalize things but in private colleges there are few colleges where the teaching is much much better than the government colleges mm. well established colleges like what we can think of manipal college jain medical college mm. and all these places the teaching is much better than many of the government colleges too so uh, if you ask me medical private or government i don't think uh, it would be right for me to uh, swing on either sides but mm -hmm. uh, each have their own advantage and post apprenticeship uh, government hospital private hospital private practice how do you uh, post post graduation when we talk about if you want to learn the skills on your own with very little guide guidance from your teachers then government setup is much much better in a private setup the hands on experiences that you get is slightly lesser but there are colleges where the teaching is good so that is also can compensate for it so uh, very i once again not a easy question to ask uh, if mm. you want to ask me frankly i mean given a choice i would always choose a government college for my post graduation interesting and um uh now with the abundance of technologies and the uh, access to information uh have you seen a change in learning and the practice part and the reach that uh, young doctors or young uh, aspiring lot. doctors have a lot a lot uh now we are more into simulation mm -hmm. wherein uh, uh teaching psychomotor skills through simulation for mm -hmm. example earlier it used to be you know, the trainees or the doctors used to learn the skills on the patients directly mm -hmm. which if you think of in the present scenario is not the right way you do nobody would like to be treated by somebody who is learning his skills mm. right so uh, what has come in now is simulation wherein the trainees learn the skills on simulated models mm -hmm. there are models which mimic exactly what a human body would respond mm. be it the feel of the tissue the way the heart beats where the pulses are felt everything is linked to it so if you go by that uh, then simulation uh, is something which has come in newly and it helps in training um, mm. the residents in uh, skills such skills Correct. We'll take a question, uh, Dr. Nirima Naik. Uh, she she also had a webinar with us. She asks, uh, Dr. Pawar, um, you have now uh, as a point. Uh, we will. I'll tell. Uh, Dr. Pawar has um, completed more than ten thousand surgeries. Correct. Yeah. But she surgery. asks. Yes. So she asks uh, from those. Uh, was there any surgery which you? can never forget as being the most complicated one this uh, there are there are quite a few uh, oh. one surgery i can remember wherein the child has a, had a very bad uh, facial defect hmm. um the skull was very very broad hmm. uh, his tongue was stuck down to the chin hmm. he had a huge tongue so after operating the child the hmm. tongue was so large that it is to fall back and stop his breathing mm. he had tough time maintaining his breathing for next 2 3 days and it was literally like sitting with the child monitoring him day in and day out so that he would not succumb to it so there have been instances and then there has been one more uh, lady i mean uh, a burns patient of mine uh, who was almost 80 85% burns mm. and she collapsed in the sense arrested 
thrice in the hospital in the ICU and all the three times we happened to revive her. She survived with 85% burns, which is very, very difficult, uh, almost 20 years back. And uh, though she had some eye defects and hearing problems, she survived till recently. I think she expired only last month. And she used to call me every Diwali. She could not hear what I would say. Every Diwali, she used to be the first person to call me to wish. And she used to start off in Marathi continuously uh, because she used to not be able to hear me. Mm. She used to go on, Dr. Tumi, SSI, Diwali, Chisabacha and all that continuously for one minute. And then she used to give the phone to her husband. And then the husband used to speak to me. Unfortunately, she expired about two months, one or two months back due to COVID. So uh, there have been instances like this, a lot of uh, uh, stories that we, they are there. <laughs> so if you see um, very inspiring uh, stories, but if you see uh, plastic surgeries are very broad term, yeah, right. as you have mentioned, uh, have the insurance companies started to uh, understand that not all plastic surgery is just cosmetic surgery or is there still a gap between the uh, financial uh, part? There is still some gap, but most of the times the insurance companies understand that uh, mm -hmm. when we certify that it is not for cosmetic purpose, they mm -hmm. take it um, as a, they, they uh, consider that as the final uh, say and they mm -hmm. do permit. Uh, so it's the onus is on us as plastic surgeons to be frank and honest about which surgeries are for cosmetic purposes and which surgeries are essential surgeries. So many of the insurance companies, initially, they take a back step when as soon as they learn that a plastic surgeon is treating it. Mm -hmm. When we explain it, many of them understand it well. Correct. Because uh, one of our viewers, uh, Arun Pawar from Pune, he had this specific question whether um, it is too cost prohibitive for an uh, average income person to afford. No, that's true. No, it's not true. Uh, reconstructive surgery is as cheap or as costly as any other surgery. Cosmetic surgery, of course. I mean, when somebody wants a cosmetic surgery, uh, they better pay for it. I mean, if you want to look handsome, you want to look beautiful, you want your wrinkles to be gone, your nose to be beautiful, you better pay for it. I mean, otherwise, why do you need it? I mean, if yes. you don't need it, you don't need it. Why, why do you want it? So uh, cosmetic surgery has to be costly. It has yes. to be costly. Because exactly. there is a difference between essential and luxury, right? Exactly, same. exactly. So uh, you know it better. I mean, you can, or if you have any chartered accountants, they will tell you. Correct. I mean, when it comes to luxury, they better pay for it. The tax is always more on luxury products than essential products. Uh, so as a broad um, scope of things, it, as you said, you, uh, were, uh, you started your own practice by, uh, sorry, you started practicing by the age of 30. So give or take uh, the duration is on an average, uh, how many years? Uh, for a super specialist, it would be in the present scenario, I think 32 to 33 years till mm -hmm. they start really getting into the thing and starting okay. earning. For a postgraduate, for an MD, MS, it would be something like uh, 28, 29 years. Mm -hmm. uh, for an MBBS person, it would be somewhere around 23 years, 24 years. Uh, okay. But then even during their training, they get uh, um, enough stipend to look after them. So it might not okay. be a uh, very large sum, but they do get money where mm -hmm. they can look after them. Yeah. So one of our uh, viewers, Uttam D. Salumke, also from Belga, uh, he had an uh, interesting question on average amount of time you uh, spend performing each surgery. It will be varied, but an average. It will be varied. There are surgeries which uh, I might be doing in five to 10 minutes. There are surgeries where I've spent more than 24 hours doing it. Mm. Uh, for instance, wherein we are trying to replant fingers, mm. each of these fingers. Now, when there is an entire, all five fingers cut, one by one, we have to go on joining mm. each finger. And joining each finger is not as simple as putting in and fixing it there. You have to join two arteries, two or three veins. You have to join uh, one tendon, the bone. Everything has to be joined. And each structure is minute, one, one millimeter, two millimeters. And there are extensive reconstructive surgeries we do for cancer, wherein mm. the jaw is removed, uh, mm. mandible hole, jaw is removed, cheek is removed. We have to take bone from the leg 
convert mm-hmm. reconstruct it into the mandible so that the person can chew and eat properly all those are there which take a long time there are surgeries you must have heard about uh, separating uh, children with congen uh, uh, yeah the uh, siamese twins what we yeah. call uh, so those surgeries take Conjoined. a long time they take a long time or hand replantations mm-hmm. hand transplant is also you have heard of hand transplant right. wherein uh, hands are taken from dead uh, people i mean after their death i mean brain death the hand mm-hmm. is used and uh, people who don't have hands the hand is transplanted all those surgeries take long hours so how do you keep up your mental and physical fitness ah uh, very important so uh, for a surgeon Mm-hmm. one thing you should know that your entire day is totally unpredictable you never know what is going to happen the next hour so when we start our day make mm-hmm. sure that you have a proper good breakfast mm-hmm. that is the first thing and our konkani breakfast is always lavish karwach breakfast matla ek char paanch poye kha ek aadha idli kha that's the way i mean i am this is my number but that's how my uh, numbers goes and uh, tally goes so i have a lavish good breakfast uh, then you don't know what is going to happen everything is going to be dictated by how the things move through the day at the end of the day you come back you have to always um, either in the morning before you have your breakfast or the end of the day you have to devote some time to exercise and that's how i do i um, at least exercise for about 10 hour or i hour and a half every day after i come back so you go prefer to do it in the morning but it doesn't happen because after my exercises after 11:30 i have to start reviewing my articles all those pending uh, inbox uh, um, mails and all that and it goes on till 12 12:30 so um, mornings it's very difficult for me that's how my schedule goes though not ideal but this is how i manage interesting so uh, you brought, uh, brought up the point of papers now you have lot a uh, lot of re- uh, research that you have done lot of papers that you have uh, written you are also doing peer reviews uh, and you have gotten lot of papers published uh, how is how how is it um, or how would you uh, put it for a young doctor to be relevant or to be more informed how how do you go about it uh there these are two aspects first let me address the uh, publishing part of it. um the present dictum for uh, medical professionals is publish or perish so you have to learn to publish uh the best part is in india there is no dearth of clinical material you have so many numbers uh for example our centers the cleft surgeries that we do um our center does in belgaum itself we are doing somewhere around 400 to 500 cleft surgeries only the cleft surgeries in a center like belgaum whereas the largest cleft center in us might be doing around 30 or 40 cleft surgeries in a year so we have lot of material and we have got a scope to learn so many things from this mm. and whatever we have learned has to be published otherwise it vanishes and unless right. it is open to general uh, medical professions and uh, professionals to learn from it what's the use what mm. we are doing so it's very important the problem with us is we don't document properly mm. our documentation is very poor especially the doctors and because we are not able to document properly we lose so much on uh, publications that's the first right. part coming to the uh, second part you mentioned how to keeping keep yourself update uh, medical profession is something which changes by the day by the hour it keeps changing hmm. what is true today is obsolete tomorrow uh, what is uh, right today is tomorrow it might be totally wrong so you have to be updated about the recent knowledge unless you are not doing that you will be overtaken somebody else will step into your shoes and take mm-hmm. away your practice the patients will gradually shift to people who are doing it better so it's always better that you keep yourself updated with the recent knowledges always subscribe to uh, journals of your mm-hmm. interest of your specialization the recent real good journals and keep abreast with whatever the latest is there in the Uh, field that you are interested in 
correct so good points for young uh, doctors and also budding uh, professionals so uh, one of the point is uh, now if you see in india uh, open access uh, has been mandated since 2011 i think uh, how do you what are your thoughts and feelings on that see open access uh, journals you mean to say open yes, access yes, journals open and yes. all that yeah uh see in india it has been mandated because uh, we find it difficult our uh, general public or the general medical to subscribe to journals which are very costly Cost abroad abroad uh, in um, the international journals many a places journals to publish your article they charge of charge fees mm. which is very uh, disheartening and uh, discouraging counterintuitive yeah counter counterproductive it is but then uh, just because uh, the need to have a better what we call the h index or a citation index these are the mm. uh, words that we use in articles and publishing and when we are authors so people get tempted to do that uh, but in india most of these journals which are there to reach out to the public there is something known as uh, nyan ganga which uh, the government of uh, uh, india has uh, started uh, so which that uh, most of the journals are available in that uh, uh, library or the resource and it is open to most of them and we can access this and it's easier but not all the journals are still open mm -hmm. access though uh, the government promotes open access journals uh, so your mathematics background are you using or uh, interest are you using that in the statistical side of your uh, papers uh, no, no not the statistical side i have not gone to that level uh, okay. i take a help from a statistician but okay. uh, the basic mathematics the elementary mathematics that's what interests me more so okay. uh, whatever the other part is there the basic work up uh, for example sample sizing there is something mm. called a sample size uh, determining the sample size or uh, creating cohorts discussing right. deciding the number the uh, frequency distribution and all that those basic things i do myself okay. but the detailed analysis nowadays softwares are available so okay. very simple and easy to do the statistical analysis mm. otherwise if i need some help i always take the help of a statistician correct so let's now uh, come to the social uh, component or the social commitment as we say right uh, you have two initiatives one is the kme uh, sorry K, uh, kles smile strain project and the uh, uh, kle rotary skin bank so right. let us first uh, talk about the uh, smiles pro uh, train project which is cleft palate uh, related right uh, i strongly believe in uh, the saying that you can't change the entire world you should try to change one thing if you can concentrate on you should do it and that's the tagline of smile train 2 okay. uh, so they believe in we can't solve all the problems in the world so this problem of cleft lip palate though we might say it's not a major problem but it is definitely a problem and that has to be solved you ask a child suffering with from that deformity how difficult their childhood is how much they have been ridiculed by their friends and other people in the society how much difficulty they have in presenting themselves we even if we have a small scratch or a mole or we have had a small thing how conscious we feel about it but children mm. born with this deformities can imagine what they go through so the entire uh, focus of the smile train is to treat these children and make them rehabilitate them back into the society these children have both not only cause the looks wise deformity but their speech also is hampered mm. so through the smile train which is a um, non government organization based in new york uh, we do these surgeries totally free for the patients we don't uh, charge them a single pie in fact even mm -hmm. if the patients are very poor we even fund their travel we fund the books education of the children also in these cases so through this uh, ngo we have been able to treat uh, many such patients this is what around uh, 10000 cleft surgeries have been performed Correct. at our hospital uh, in belgaum and this started in the year 2001 
and uh, we are one of the largest centers in India as well as uh, internationally too. So this has been very satisfying basically because this was my area of interest. And secondly, um, all my innovations have been in cleft lip palate surgery as what we are talking yeah. about the geometry and surgical technique and all that. Uh, the best part is I'll tell you, I, I don't get too much of uh, economic remuneration from the surgeries, but the satisfaction when mm. we remove the dressing on the next day and the parents, the seeing the smile on the parents' face, the mother smiling, the father smiling, mm. the look of surprise on their face and the gratitude that reflects in their eyes is the mm. ultimate gift that anybody can ask for. No amount of finances or money can uh, give this satisfaction. So Very that nice. is how the smile train has helped me too in being able to reach out to these unfortunate children and making the, their lives better. That's so here, uh, here, any uh, age uh, restriction for this corrective surgery? No, there's no age restriction. The thing is, the earlier we do, the better. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the lip surgery we do somewhere around for, for three to six months. But the palate surgery, the inside, the palate, what we call talu, talu manta, talu te, te open urta, te band karche, it's very important before the mm -hmm. age of one year, one to one okay. and a half years. It is important in their speech. Mm -hmm. that delay killer, then they are not able to speak properly. And once that wrong speech is ingrained in your mind, then mm -hmm. it's very difficult to correct it later yeah. on in life. Any uh, uh, instances in India is more just because of the size of population or is there any predisposition for our uh, Indian mm -hmm. support? There are a couple of predisposing factors in India, as I agree. One is consanguinity, marrying within the family cousins first cousins marriage that I have. this is mm -hmm. one reason why we get these deformities more secondly uh, our women are slightly malnourished certain deficiencies in the vitamin can also cause this deformity if you look at the genetic predisposition then mm -hmm. this defect is more common in the oriental races that is the okay. chinese and uh, um, those races it is Mongolite. more more common. mongoloid races that's true okay. uh, than the caucasian india it's average around one in 700 to 1000 children have this deformity okay Ani, uh, atami let's talk about the skin bank part that is also a very uh, innovative uh, or new concept for a lot of us what is it and how it works uh, focusing only on the skin bank. Skin bank is one focused area of uh, skin donation. Uh, speaking broadly, organ donation is what uh, we should all be aware of. Right. Um, if you look at the world statistics, organ donation in India is still in its infancy. Infancy in the mm. sense it's still not picked up. Uh, whereas countries like Spain and uh, other European countries and even American countries have surged far ahead of us. Mm. Uh, we don't pledge our organs. We are very hesitant to do it. Generally, taboo, uh, taboo is there. People are feel, I don't know what the problem, forget organs. See, people are anxious even to donate blood. Mm -hmm. I mean, we organize blood donation camp uh, in Belgaum. Half the people are not willing to come forward to donate blood. Mm -hmm. I really don't understand. Now, coming to organ uh, donation, it's totally out of question. But mm -hmm. uh, it should be something which we should all know that this is something which we have we can give when we are going back. We have come empty-handed. And even when we are going, if you want all our entire body to be wasted without being of use to anybody, at least after our death, let us be of use to somebody. Whereas now, if you look at the organs, there are all almost all the organs can be used some way or the other to save lives. Uh, but there are certain prerequisites. In other organ donations, the person should be only brain dead. He should not be totally dead. The other organs should be functioning when they are being donated. Right. Whereas it come when we come to eye donation and skin donation, it can be given even after death. So both these organs, the eye and the skin, can be given anytime within six hours after death. Coming specifically to skin donation, uh, skin is the largest organ of the body uh, and the most uh, organ which is taken for granted. 
Yes. Maybe. We never know the importance of skin. Hard only only on facials, only facial <laughs> skin is focused on. <laughs> focused on, yeah. That too, that too off late. Well, there be nothing. Uh, but skin is a very important organ. It separates the external environment from the internal environment. And this separation is very important. Because what is inside the body is totally out, different from out, outside the body. So all the temperature regulation, the fluid regulation, the electrolyte regulation is very important from the skin point of view. Mm. Patients who lose skin, especially the burns victim, basil mm. biurta, chazil biurta, then will skin it loss the luta, ki angatlan temperature loss the ta. Fluid angat udak utka praman kamizata. It in sagate of complication and other problems increase in these people. So people, we can use the skin harvested from people who have already died and they have donated their skin to save these lives. Ani, uh, uh, Santa le maka ki, uh, skin has a longer sh uh, shelf life for uh, transplantation than any other organ. Yeah. Dusre uh, organs atta hai sangila maravani kidney bhi jaya vasa. Immediately death chale jauz pahile matar functioning ashil tan diwish padta. Hmm. Uh, and it can't be stored. Hmm. Uh, and the kidney hmm. within few hours. Given so, uh, so uh, skin is a very important organ. Uh, 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 skin is a very important organ. Skin can be say, preserved for as long as 5 to 6 years. Hmm. Once donated, after the skin is harvested, it can be stored for 5 to 6 years. It can be used for 5 to 6 years. There is no need of blood group compatibility like other organs third is anybody can donate skin to anybody uh, age is not a criteria sex is not a criteria color of the skin is not a criteria anybody can mm. so that's the beauty of uh, skin donation any pre-existing uh, conditions that uh, may debar somebody from donating yeah, skin? very few very few um, um, Punita, I must congratulate you because you are asking the question from a medical point of view <laughs> and I add stuff to you. I mean, you, uh, there are very few instances uh, like cancer which has spread to the skin mm -hmm. or infection of the skin or certain infections like uh, HIV, AIDS, okay. and, um, uh, hepatitis B, which okay. can spread through this. Those are the contraindications for um, donating skin. Okay. Ani ek question aila, uh, Mr. Santosh Shane from Dami Mumbai. He's asking about uh, Dr. Pawar, any developments in synthetic skin grafting? Synthetic skin and synthetic skin grafting? Yeah. There, there, there are uh, newer skin substitutes, Manta So mm -hmm. there are a lot of skin substitutes available in the market, but they are prohibitively costly. Mm -hmm. uh, for the Indian scenario, they are not an option, except <laughs> for people who are can afford it. Uh, most of the people, they are beyond their reach. There are uh, skin substitutes. Some of them, I wouldn't like to name the um, companies, but then I'm forced to do that. Uh, there's something called as Integra, which can be used. There's so many dermal substitutes which are there. Matrix, dermal matrix is there. All those can be used to substitute the skin. And, uh, also something, some uh, uh, biological fish based uh... Uh -huh. There's something called as chitin. Chitin is uh, derived from shrimps and uh, prawns. So these uh, things also are used to heal, but they are not exactly a uh, uh, substitute. Okay. substitute for skin. Mm -hmm. Sir, to me, uh, here's the topic as tabu jala, ki, uh, uh, organ donation. To me, it experience sangha wherein it will be a motivating factor for all of our community members. Yeah. See, this taboo or fear about organ donation is should be totally gone. How I sang Tamgalit community check, I would take this opportunity to thank that lady. She is Asha Uday Savant, Gadawilti lady. She, she had lost her husband a couple of years back. She lost her son again to a road traffic accident. Okay. Then uh, he was uh, brain dead. He was brain dead. Then the lady volunteered to donate the organs of her son. So we should all thank her and hold her in very high respect for having volunteered to donate 
the organs of her son and because of whom many of lives have been saved. His heart was transplanted to another person. And the person is alive, the person whom the heart was transplanted mm. to. So this is something we should uh, take an opportunity to thank the lady, Asha Uday Savant, mother of Sunil Savant. Sunil Savant was mm. the, her son who expired in an accident and she volunteered to donate his organ to save others' lives. So there have been instances, we have people in our own community who are coming forward to do such great deeds which should be appreciated by one and all of us. Very inspirational, very inspirational for all of us. At one hand, we have people who are not willing to donate blood. And on the other hand, we have people who are willing to do such great uh, deeds. Uh, talking or continuing with the social commitment part, um, any a few changes that you would want Indian doctors to incorporate in today's world? Yes. Uh, the first thing is for beginners, I would like to tell them that uh, during your initial practice, the financial returns should not be your criteria of treating patients. Uh, in the beginning of your practice, when you're starting practice, you should learn to create a broad base. I think it's not only true in uh, medical field, otherwise also, we have to, in the initial uh, part of our career or our profession, the base has to be broad and strong. Only if the base is broad and strong, and that can be done only with initial sacrifices. When you do that, possibly hard work, possibly sacrifice, possibly more investment, possibly more uh, losses on your own self. But then if the base is strong and sturdy, you will be able to erect a taller building. So mm -hmm. that's the way you should go look at it and your base should be stronger. So for the medical professions, in the beginning, you might have to go in for a lesser remuneration, whereas treat more number of patients. Mm. When you treat no more number of patients, eventually your patient base increases and you will future practice further flourishes. So after four or five years, then you will get a lot of patients. Then you can think of the revenue aspect, but that should not be your criteria right in the beginning. Because in the beginning, you are not only gaining, but you are also gaining experience also. So this should be the outlook of what is happening is of late, uh, many of the youngsters want to start earning immediately the day they graduate out, they want uh, their pockets to be full. That's mm. not the way one should be looking at. We should look be looking at it in a broader perspective. True. Uh, but we are now living in a, a world where there is uh, financial aspects also that you have to consider. Becoming a doctor, you have spent so much amount of money the infrastructure that uh, various companies or entities have put in or uh, the how how uh, what is your experience and your learnings from the 90s compared to the 2000s and then the 2010s uh, well uh, being a doctor is uh, not your short term investment plan it is a long term investment plan so right. the day you are chosen to be a doctor you should think that it is not a uh, thing that you can get immediate returns on if we hmm. talk it in terms of financial the return of investment return of investment it is not immediate returns you are looking at you are looking at the long term returns and the long term returns are definitely going to be good and as long as you stay true to your profession you are doing practicing it in a healthy way in ethical manner obviously you are going to shine out and come out of the crowd and make a place for yourself so uh, you have to approach that uh, finances are, of course, important, but they are not the sole uh, reason why you have to choose the profession. I'll tell you my own instance. When I came and joined here, um, there was our director, medical director at that time was Colonel A.K. Singh. So I came and told him that I have just given my um, exams for MCH plastic surgery and I would like to come and join here. So he straight away said, you can come and join anytime now. You can join now also tomorrow itself. Then I said, no, I would like to take some time. I'm planning to take my parents to the nearby temples and I'll come and after seven, eight days, I'll come and join. So he said, fine. And uh, by the time I was back, he had kept the appointment order ready. Then he gave it to me. I picked it up and thanked him. And he said, you haven't even seen what your salary is going to be. 
I said, uh, well, sir, it would be the same as you give to everybody else of my qualification. Would you do, do anything different? Then he said, you have never negotiated. You have not, have not even asked uh, what salary it's going to be. And uh, I've never seen a dumber person before in my life. But uh, even now he remembers me. Now he's in yes. Patna, of course. That you are a person who uh, approached me in this manner. But uh, honestly speaking, whatever I am doing now and um, whatever level I am now is solely because of that. If I had thought of earning more, I would have been in some other place and possibly not been able to do justice to my own self. So patient before profit. Ah, yeah. Patience. Any, any mantras that you have in your life? Uh, well, first thing is, as I said, focus on the base. I mean, your grounds, your roots have to be strong. Mm. Your foundation has to be strong. Rest comes by itself. Um, second is, for youngsters, especially medical profession, you don't run after money. If you run after good quality work, the money will run after you. This is the second one. Third one is whatever you have received from the world, return it back. Mm -hmm. You can't pocket it and keep it in with yourself. You learn from the patients, from your teachers. You have to return it back before you leave this world. And you have to return it back with interest. So mm -hmm. that is the third one I am saying. Then fourth one is have your priorities life right. Nobody is going to get everything in life. We all mm. know that there are some things in our lives which we have not got and some things which we have got. Focus on what you have got and make sure that you make the best about what you have got and not focus on what you have not got because that is you can't do anything about it. So whatever you have got in life, focus on it and add on to it. That's right. the way you can go ahead. Yeah, mantras that we can all abide by, not just medical professionals or uh, teachers. We, everyone can utilize and make it their mantra of life. So uh, we'll come to uh, more of a session or uh, more of a point where in there are some basics that are uh, communicated. Because what has happened is what, what I see is now with Google and with the internet uh, access, Everybody is a doctor of sorts. <laughs> we call them Google doctors. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so some of the basics that I would want you to uh, first is uh, self-medication and experimentation. You can just point out what are the follies. Yeah. The, see, uh, Google is good for gathering inf information. I agree. But uh, don't make that decide on how you are going to be treated or what you want for health. Health is much more important than what you see through Google. Uh, it cannot replace a doctor, a good doctor. What's happening is uh, nowadays we get a lot of uh, patients coming to us. Uh, I've seen this ad and this is what is suggested. This is good. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to do this. Will you do this? Mm -hmm. So... Uh, they already come with a treatment plan that I need this treatment. Will you give me this treatment? Which is very dangerous. We can't go by that. Google can show anything. So much of information is there. And believe me, half of it is not true. Mm. So you have to always see a doctor, a genuine doctor, proper doctor, and see what is best for you. Very dangerous to experiment. Somebody mm. says... Uh, somebody has told Ponita Sangki, I hung with the hair treatment, do lala poete, pale laita to palea, lip long yoka, or somebody else will tell Hangut Kauche, Hek Hausai, Jona Barber Kite, um, uh, Kitten Zamlach Bika, the Sakai Utungion, Chardane, Lavanka, Badam Kai, Ashkalatu has a tell. These are a lot of things which have uh, there in the net. I uh, we can't uh, go by these. You have to learn that every person is different. There are certain things which you cannot decide on yourself. You know the limitations. Staying healthy is important. Having healthy lifestyle is important. But all these things here say, Kone Mandal Mangan Karche, Henry Hangwas Mandal Kelpe. And a second, I problem for Elaisa, Ki Ek Doctor Kanavatu, 
तेल गुड़ कमी जाना मैं नेक्स्ट डॉक्टर कहते हैं तेजे जाना अनेक अनेक देर इज नो कंटिन्टी सो एवरी टाइम दे स्टार्ट फ्रॉम स्क्वेर वन एंड एंड अप इन दैट लूप एंड देन इवेन्च्युअली दे गेट फेडअप को ट्रीटमेंट बरबर जाना सोन दिता एंड दे रिजॉर्ट टू ऑल अदर सॉर्ट ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट डॉक्टर कड़े वचा जालना तुमके बरबर जाना परत वो औषधान कमी जालना डॉक्टर वील नो वॉट वे इज हेडिंग टू एंड डायग्नोसिंग बिकम्स इजीयर पर दुसरे डॉक्टर कड़ी गाला ही विल अगेन हैव टू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम स्क्वेर वन सो इट इट डजंट वर्क लाइक दैट सो पीपल हैव टू नो दैट दे हैव टू हैव ट्रस्ट इन द डॉक्टर हैव फेथ इन द डॉक्टर एंड फॉलोअप इज वेरी इंपॉर्टंट फॉलोअप को करना आणि एक टक्के झाला विथ ऍक्सेस टू ऍप्लिकेशन अँड ऑल दिस डिस्ट्रप्टिव्ह ऍप्स आता लाईक जस्ट तुम्ही टॅक्सी ऑर्डर करता तुम्ही डॉक्टर बी ऑर्डर करीबडी कॅन पुट अप एनी ऍड ऑन एनी ऑफ दिस ऍप्स डोंट गेट कॅरीड अवे बाय दिस आणि त्याचे मागीर ते स्टार रेटिंग बी दिता त्या रेटिंग बी कोण तर वळखीच्यानच रेटिंग दिल्ली उरता uh 5 uh, stars 10 stars 6 stars 7 stars with that so i don't go by these uh, you have to see personally doctor kana was no loka the doctor who spends time with you who asks you properly talks to you properly gathers information might not always advise you what you would like to hear mm. those are the doctors you should learn to trust correct acha to coming back to the basics uh, how to take care of basic cuts हां दिस इज व्हेरी इम्पॉर्टंट आता बरेच वेळा इंजुरीज जातात आणि लोकांना खबर होऊ नका की कचे काय कचे कट्स मायनर कट्स कॅन बी व्हेरी डिसिव्हिंग एक एक फाटी दिसत की मायनर लहान कट झाले असा पण त्याची इंजुरी डीपर इंजुरी उरू शकतात ते पहिले आम्हाला पळवू जाय की आता खई कट झाले इंजुरी झाले त्याचे डिस्टल पार्ट आता हाता कट झाले मुखार किती ते सेन्सेशन नॉर्मल असतात काय ना मुवमेंट बरोबर जात काय ना हे सगळे लक्षात बरोबर दोन घेऊ का आणि अशी किती उला इमिडिएटली डॉक्टराकडे मजका खंचे कट ऑर इंजुरी बेस्ट ट्रीटेड विद इन अ फ्यू आर्स ऑफ द इंजुरी आता बरेच वेळ जाता कट झाले असा हा चल फाल वचा पर वचा मग तिथपर्यंत ते इन्फेक्ट जाता प्रॉब्लेम जाता हिलिंग बिकम्स डिफिकल्ट सो ऍज सून एज पॉसिबल गो अँड सी अ डॉक्टर मीन वाईल खे कट झाला फर्स्ट थिंग इज यू हॅव टू वॉश नाईसली जर ब्लिडिंग जाते उरले त्याचे प्रेशर दवन दवर का आणि प्रेशर म्हणल्यावर कंटिन्युअस प्रेशर फॉर ऍटलिस्ट फाईव्ह मिनिट्स टू टेन मिनिट्स वॉचाकडे पळवून घेऊन फाईव्ह टू टेन मिनिट्स विदाउट लिफ्टिंग ना बरेच वेळा किती कट जात म्हटलं दवरतात दहा सेकंड काढतात परत अरे ब्लिडिंग जातं परत दवरतात ना नॉट दॅट पुट प्रेशर लुक एट द वॉच फॉर फाईव्ह टेन मिनिट्स होल्ड इट दॅर the bleeding will stop hmm. otherwise if there is no bleeding wash clean bare clean hmm. utkan wash kara tap out the sakal the one hmm. bare wash kan gyun clean ek towel kapde te je dawa che and then you hmm. can go to the doctor if it is a deep cut if it is a very minor while we are catches be ula you can manage it chehre hmm. chehre be ula then you will have to be worried scar kas jata kit jata then a doctor kade an appropriate doctor kade gele bare एलिवेशन इज इम्पॉर्टंट ना सकल दवरतात आम्ही बरेच वेळा सूज येऊ लागतात सूज आले नंतर हिलिंग परत डिले जातात करेक्ट आणि बरेच पटी किती जातात ते हळद लाय ते चाय चाय पावडर लाय हे काय वॉट इज द करेक्ट वे uh ऑनेस्टली स्पीकिंग टर्मरिक इज हॅव्हिंग अँटीसेप्टिक प्रॉपर्टी इट इज गुड टू युज टर्मरिक Uh, when nothing else is available kais na dusre manla ta turmeric la anjon ta wound dressing karu shakta te vail vair wound la if it is a deep wound better go to a doctor vail vair is cut zalle halad launat kai jas problem na turmeric is having antiseptic property it can be used ani ek asa ki gauze versus bandaid uh, should the wound be able to breathe or kashe Uh, there are different wounds which have to be treated differently uh, very difficult kashkan sangche thought difficult asa sagle soon mag describe karu janta it is too technical jar vail vairat kharcha retile asa asa te wound ami jatitle clean the varu jay whereas while lok samjhatat ki te tashi dawache ani mai te khapli jaun gyon mai te sutun vata te त्या प्रोसेसात काय ना इन्फेक्ट बी जाऊ शकतात 
Hmm. Clean washing the wound is important with clean water. And uh, if it is a cut, hmm. cut madlar skin ach bitter gelas layer, then it has to be dressed properly. Bail bail tular tek ointment laungan ugri doru shakta. And deep cut tular tek close kelbat. And the uh, same first, uh, first aid for burns? Yes, it's very good. It's a lot of people who are not aware of it. It's a lot of people But first hmm. thing is, when it's a lot of people, first thing is pour water on burns. It's a lot of people who are not aware of it. Except for example, electricity current, electricity flows, it's a lot of people who are But otherwise, any burns, udak hmm. ghalchit. Khub hmm. ice udak udzai man na. Tapat lo udak tu, nara tu udak tu. Flowing udak, to part jay zari lassa ta jay under the watch. Jitle vay parant te zari sensation kami zat pay tit paranta udak ka sakal the watch. That is the best way of dealing burns. Bares loka ashtis ta ke udka sakal the watch nanta mai poor ata tu jas problem nanta. Tashi na the poor oil man lar the burns is staying superficial. The hmm. whole idea of pouring water on burns is physics to uh, science. Uh, the, um, the, the, the temperature, the heat flows from higher temperature to lower temperature. And if you have a temperature, the bitter heat is not a good thing. It dissipates. The damage, deeper damage, avoids. The pouring water on the burns is very important. And uh, burns are oil burn. Same Even way. oil burn will be place it under water. Whatever it is, you place under water. Magir, uh, how about bruises and rashes? Ha, bruises, as I said, bruises, I will money superficial scratches or bruises, or yeah, yeah, abrasions, zata, then clean the very little bare. Hmm. If it is a closed bruise, but a bleeding be bitter bleeding be then uh, hmm. you can't do much about it. You only time will take care of it. Hmm. And rashes. Uh, rashes can occur because of so many reasons. Hmm. Uh, rashes, uh, it could be allergy, it could, could be infection, it could be viral infection. So each of them can has to be treated differently. Very difficult for me to say, uh, rash, kash kan. as long as possible, you keep the area clean hmm. and don't apply anything external. If you are having doubts, don't apply anything external till the doctor suggests you. Correct. Which is not right. Correct. To me, you can educate suddenly bruise without any impact. So that is a cause for concern which has to be seen by an MD. But it's fatty need is at Somebody is a blue or she is a That can happen. Age is a little easily. That is the current amount of bleeding. But there are certain causes for bruising also. There are bleeding parameters. There are problems with spontaneous bruises. There are spontaneous bruises. There are doctors who consult. It has to be considered. And he tungel che burns at any there are uh, levels of burns. There any way of identifying uh, so that you take the proper care? Burns at Amgel degrees at the first degree, Correct. second degree. I am I am really impressed by what you have read and come prepared for it. You have literally, I think so, uh, medical profession that we almost you are paralleling it. Uh, superficial burns at Kitas are redness at this time, but it is very painful. Hmm. Like sunburns we get. The more superficial it is, the more painful is the burns. And if you have a bleb, that mm-hmm. burn is slightly superficial than a burns where there is no bleb. Mm-hmm. So, if you have a deep burns, it is slightly on the superficial side. Mm-hmm. Uh, but a deep burn is less painful. If you have nerve endings, it burns. Oh, okay. Even pain is less. So mm. even a burn wound has to be maintained clean mm. as far as possible. Wash it nicely. Consult a doctor. Antibiotic cream can be applied for small burns. If mm. it is a large area, you have to consult a doctor. Correct. And yet, what tendencies are lancing the boil? Puncture karta. Puncture karta. I wouldn't advise puncturing the bleb. 
जर ते ब्लेब खूब थोड़ आता आता एक्रॉस सपोज इट इज एक्रॉस माय रिस्ट एंड इट इज सच लार्ज द मूवमेंट ऑफ द रिस्ट कैन ऑटोमेटिक थिंक ऑफ रपचरिंग इट बट स्मॉल ब्लेब्स लीव दे टू देम सेल्स दे विल आयदर गेट रपचर्ड बाय देम सेल्स और दे गेट रिजॉल्व बाय देम सेल्स सो यू शुड अवॉइड फिडलिंग विथ इट अच्छा नाउ कमिंग टू द कंक्लूडिंग पार्ट गुड स्किन केयर हैबिट्स एक तुम्ही सांगा फॉर गुड स्किन केयर फर्स्ट थिंग इज हायड्रेशन यू शुड बी ड्रिंकिंग इनफ वॉटर द मोर वॉटर यू ड्रिंक द बेटर हायड्रेटेड युअर स्किन इज सेकंड इज मॉइस्चरायझिंग युअर स्किन एस्पेशली ज्या जाग्यावर स्पेटिंग बी जास्त जाणार थंय यू मेक इट हॅबिट टू युज मॉइस्चरायझर अँड कीप युअर स्किन ॲज सॉफ्ट ॲज पॉसिबल थर्ड वन इज eat as much as vegetables and fruits mm. those will help your skin to a great deal not only the skin hair nails everything is reflected on the uh, food habits that you have and all this vitamin containing food supplement mam kit karta hai food ganat pan we start taking vitamin supplements mm. which is not the ideal way of uh, uh, tackling it so you should have good food healthy food with high fiber mm. content that will like, keep your skin uh, healthy and the, the fourth one is avoiding direct sunlight hmm. uh, sunlight off late because of you all know the greenhouse effect and all that ozone layer hmm. depletion the so, so, ultraviolet rays amgel skin ak effect jo lagla ta and tejin bares photo damage that we call it photo damage so this hmm. that has to be avoided how do we avoid it one is uh, avoid direct sun as far as possible which is easier said than done because most of us are in a profession where we have to go out in the sun right. and even totally abstaining from sunlight also is not healthy right. we have to uh, be exposed to sun so what in these cases kita sir sunscreens are available lot of good sunscreen uh, creams are used and those should be used routinely for the face region or the exposed regions correct ani ek atak kit asni when we talk about the moisturizing uh, we are from karwar district okay mm-hmm. so saga ka coconut oil is one of the favorites any adverse effects or is it very uh, good for our it is good energy? enough it is mm-hmm. good enough uh, uh, just like any other moisturizer coconut oil also is a good moisturizer only correct. thing is you can't apply coconut oil and go to your office <laughs> <laughs> yes but for a sunday practice it is good right yeah good 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 enough any time yes. very good so some few light uh, quick questions uh, to sure, uh, sure. just before we end uh, okay. as you are a voracious reader i would want to know a book that you can read again and again um ayn rand ayn rand al atlas um, shrug at last track was a uh, sort of a um, changer in my uh, way of thinking earlier i was uh, more uh, uh, sort of a socialist sort of a thinker but uh, with ayn rand i realized the value of uh, human um, mm-hmm. capital or skill, human like uh, skill and ability uh, ability has to be rewarded capability has to be rewarded and that is one book which i can uh, always say that has changed my way of thinking of late ikigai is a good book mm. uh, one can read uh, i am sure most of you all must have read it uh, very nice some of the nice concepts is follow your heart and mm. do what you enjoy doing the most till you die and don't stop working never stop working till the last breath so that that principle from ikigai favorite sport that you follow uh, sport one is badminton Mm, also played uh, i used to play earlier hatana okay. uh, now hardly any time but then badminton is one sport okay. uh, which i love favorite kokni dish kokni dish dahi toy ani lonche ambya lonche which which ambya lonche amgel midi apya midi happy uh, midi yes <laughs> midi uh, uh, favorite movie favorite movie i either like very light movies or very serious movie mm-hmm. uh, light movies is angur one okay. there was a movie angur sanjeev kumar ale shile mm-hmm. i watched it with my father when i was in my 8th uh, standard i think mm-hmm. so we had a nice time and great very fun good. movie uh, one of your favorite songs that makes you feel uh, young um young is uh, um, किसी के मुस्कुराहटों पे हो निसार किसी के वास्ते हो तेरे दिल में प्यार जीना इसी का नाम है 
if something. are you a sing uh, are you a singer or uh, proclivity to it uh, i i sing but not a singer <laughs> okay okay good so one of the events we will make you uh, uh, sing your singing oh god <laughs> you scared i think i take back my answer <laughs> acha uh, the first thing that comes to mind when i say karwar karwar food fish belgaon weather uh, india india brains intelligence very good what do you see in india uh, indian brains the jugaad the intelligence be is it for good reason or bad reason you find don't find it anywhere else in the world correct because you have traveled also to um, uh, various countries you have been in france you have uh, actually you have also practiced there uh i have been in france and uh, not practiced i have uh, i was uh, doing a fellowship there okay i was one of the first uh, plastic surgeons in india to train in endoscopic plastic surgery which is cosmetic okay. surgery mainly but i haven't practiced it though um so that was in france but uh, taiwan taiwan okay. is another place where i have spent uh, quite a few quite some time there uh, what i appreciate about the taiwanese people is their hard working nature they start working in the morning they go continuously work for 12 14 hours with the same zeal with the same smile with the same energy mm-hmm. which i don't think we indians can boast of but if it comes to brains and the smartness and the intelligence we indians are very good acha finally before we close uh, if not medicine or teaching or practicing what would uh, rajesh pawar be known for i used to be in between the midst of numbers i love numbers um i still love numbers if you catch me doing nothing you'll find me playing sudoku or some puzzle so mm-hmm. i am always with numbers and numbers always entice me wherever they are be it on my mobile be it in my on my uh, journal pages or be it on the milestones my numbers are what, uh, okay make me crazy Well, wow, very, very, very good. So, thank you, Doctor Power, for spending your valuable time with us. And uh, finally, I would also like to thank all our viewers for watching. And soon we will be back with another interesting personality and an interesting topic. Uh, till then, uh, be in can touch. I take a small opportunity? Yes, yes, please, yes, yes. Please. I really appreciate the way you have. in depth studied uh, so many questions of yours made me feel like i'm speaking to a doctor medical <laughs> doctor so uh, hats off to you you're done a no, thank, you, thank, you, thank, thank you thank you very much thank you. thanks a lot uh, any message to the youth well i i think i have uh, said it all yes uh, 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 last message what i would like to give is have your priorities set right in life mm-hmm. look at what you have got and not what you have not got add on to what you have already got and leave behind what you have not got okay. so that's the thing i would like to thank you so much thank you everyone uh, stay healthy stay safe and please share uh, like and subscribe thank you thank you konkan marada samaj and thanks puneet bye thank you so much more